Hi, uh, today we're looking at the Bacara wheel. There are several self-revolving water wheel perpetual motion machines that have been videoed on YouTube. Some of them are shown as working and some are showing them not. As we know, YouTube can be doctored and looped to make it look like something's working when it may not be. So I've taken the opportunity to go back to have a look at this in a bit more depth on the maths and the physics involved to see whether this is something that would ever be feasible or not. So I've plotted this in uh, Fusion 360 um, and we've taken a 13 arm uh, water wheel on 150 millimeter centimeter hub and these arms are 110 millimeters long half filled with fluid and we'll just take the assumption that each fluid arm weighs one kilogram so on the left hand side we can see that there's an equilibrium point uh, yellow top and bottom and then the green is acting in our favor working with gra gravity to accelerate the water wheel in the correct direction that we want but then on the opposite side we're having to move that up against gravity in order to um, get this to turn around. Now, we're, we're two elements come into play. We're looking at one, the force that's been um, exerted, and that's going to be the same if the fluid position, the centers of masses were in the same area, in the same place on each wheel, but they're not. The distance they are from the center means there's a multiplication of that force to where it acts for work at the center of the, of the hub. So we're taking the center of mass of each of these fluid arms and we're looking at how far each one of those are from the center when it moves down that one kilogram moves down one uh, one turn uh, with gravity at 9.8 meters a second so if we go around and we plot how far each of those are as we move and we have also look at the total height that we've moved which in on both sides is going to be the same it's 197 millimeters from top to bottom and we're having a set of movements of the same height. Um, we do have one, two, three, four, five, six moves on the green side coming to the equilibrium point. And then on the red side, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points, which are going against gravity to the height. So at first glance, we are getting uh, a greater weight having to go against gravity because of the way these arms are filling and moving with the water than the arms to the left but we need to see whether that multiplication for the distance is greater than or less than the red so if we take that as an example and we've plotted that on the spreadsheet we have 13 arms 110 millimeter um, lengths and we filled them half with water the total height moved is the same for both uh, 0.197 uh, meters 197 millimeters in this case and we're looking at and plotting the number of distances from the center the average distance from the center each of those masses are so 85.284 98.995 five, etc 85.284 5 and i've plotted all those on this spreadsheet here we have seven distances on the left and we have eight distances on the right because we have the two equilibrium points and we're, that's our starting position here and then we're moving it down one kilogram is moving down um, to that next point so we have one two three four five six downward moves sorry one two three four five six seven distances that we're interested in and then again on the opposite side we're going from the starting equilibrium to the next point one two three four five six seven so all those distances are of interest to us in which case we have one two three four five six seven eight distances so if i come back in here one two three four five six seven eight we've plotted them all on this graph and then we've simply added up all those distances and we've divided by the number of points to get an average distance from the center that height movement moved six kilograms in this case and it moved that same distance but it moved seven kilograms in this case in order to calculate the forces generated we need to know the height which is the total height we've moved the weight times the uh, distance uh, from the center that we've moved it and the constant of 9.8 meters per second squared for gravity and that should give us an answer uh, in newtons now the calculation for this uh, for the green side on this first example uh, gives us 1.2529 uh, uh, newtons 
and on the right hand side it gives us 1.246 newtons so indeed there is a positive force for rotation uh, on the green side but it's very small only 0.48 percent and with us moving six kilograms and seven kilograms we're only getting 0.006 newtons which is um a, a, a fraction of a of a pound of force so not very much torque for us to be able to turn a generator to create power but obviously you could scale it up to get greater amounts of power the length of the perimeter, perimeter uh, travel as i showed you earlier was 355 and 315 uh, so the gearing ratio is in effect 1.12 but that's not affecting the forces it's simply showing us um, that the perimeter is traveling faster than the the center now I then took that and I looked at what would happen if we extended those arms to 200 uh, millimeters, which is this one here. And in this case, they're approximately a third full of water. And again, we plotted um, what were the distances from the center and, and so on, exactly the same as we did before. And we arrived at um, these figures here and what i found was that actually decreases um, the positive power on the green side by 13 percent so we end up with a negative um, requirement to rotate and we can see here that's because we only have one two three four green arms acting whilst we have one two three four five six seven now red arms so the longer we go on the arms um, the more detrimental the effect which may be why some people's um, examples are working and some aren't I then moved on again to have a look at what would happen if we made the arms shorter, so to 99 millimeters. So if we take those to 99 uh, millimeters, which is here, we then have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, we're getting back to uh, similar equilibrium to the first one we had. But when we calculate the forces down, it's now moved from, instead of a positive 0.48%, it's moved down to a negative 2.28%. So if we shorten the arms uh, further, that ratio of 110 millimeter arm length to 150 millimeter hub um, got worse as we went to a 99 millimeter arm length to 150 millimeter hub. So we don't want to shorten from 110. Somewhere between 110 and 200, I haven't tested 120, 130, etc. Um, but it could do the same thing and to find the, the perfect spot that we want to create something that may or may not work. And the last thing that I, I looked at was what happens if we um, take the original one, which was our best performing 0.48%, and we now fill that instead of half fill with fluid, we fill it a third fill with fluid. And we see what happens then um, to the calculations. So we end up with a one. Uh, 196 millimeter total drop on both and we end up with these distances from the sense that those forces are acting so if we go back to the spreadsheet and you can pause it if you need to to double check the figures we now have one third full and a 13 arm length same as we had before and these are the new figures that we've plotted from there this now gives us 4.63 percent difference to the positive from the forces so in order to build one of these you need to be going 110 to 150 millimeter minimum um, hub ratio. I've got the arms being 10 millimeter high. I haven't made them any thicker because that's the ratio that fits perfectly around this hub. So 10 millimeter high, 110 millimeters long and 150 millimeter hub. Those ratios scaled in whichever direction should provide something that has the most chance of working. If we fill that then a third full, and I'm probably going to try another one a quarter full to see what that does, just to find an optimum point. But you can see if you carry on through this simple calculations, you can get to an optimized version through trial and error to then go ahead and build. My next step is I'm going to finish that and then I am going to go ahead and build one. We can't do anything to improve that force here based on the sizes I've got, simply looking at a two-dimensional shape but what we can also do to improve the uh, the torque and the power generated from this is to create <coughs> those arms extended in the um, the vertical plane so if we then take which would originally as we plotted a 10 centimeter arm with one kilogram in it I can 
extend that as far as I want to increase the weight that's moving. And those ratios are going to act in exactly the same way. So if you wanted to increase the power with this, you'd go much deeper, but with a shape the same as we've just plotted. So if somebody wishes to build one of these, and I am going to build one, and there'll be a follow-up video once I've just completed these calculations to find the sweet spot, I'm going to 3D print one, build it, and I'll be posting a video. So please subscribe and click the bell item, bell icon, and then you'll be able to be notified when I've finished that, which will be over the next few days. And we'll see whether it does indeed work. I'm not going to loop any videos. I'm not going to make anything fake. You'll get it plain and simple whether it does work. But going back to the maths, it does seem to be something in this. I am curious now. I didn't, I didn't expect these results. I expected there to be uh, no chance of this working. Having had a look at this, it seems that there may well be. So watch this space. I'll be uh, completing this um, shortly. Thank you. Just rewatch that video before publishing and just a quick addendum. It occurs to me that what we're actually looking for uh, in the system is an imbalance between left and right. And the greater the imbalance, the greater the performance. So rather than just considering whether it's green or whether it's red, what we're looking for is how big is the difference. And the biggest one from all this uh, analysis was 13% from the longer arms that are about a quarter full here. So that's uh, therefore what we're after. It should therefore want to rotate in the clockwise direction uh, because the weight and, and the force is being generated in this clockwise direction from all of these fluid items is 13% greater than the weight that's been generated in the anti-clockwise direction with gravity um, from the green side. So it's not just whether it's um, left or right, it's what's the size. <clears throat> size is important in this case. So I am going to be building um, this one, and I'm also going to have a look at uh, this one as well, which is the third full. And if we can compare them side by side, we should have a different rotational speed, and one should be easy to turn than the other one going clockwise, one going anti-clockwise. So that will demonstrate whether the maths is true or not. So watch this space. I'll be building those over the next few days, 3D printing them, filling them up, and um, we can watch them run. Thanks.